The number one reason woodworkers don't use their dust collection setup is because of convenience. So today, I'm gonna to solve that by giving my shop a massive upgrade by completely automating my dust collection system. I'm in a lot of different woodworking groups on social media, and I've seen a lot of elaborate dust collection setups, to say the least. However, too often I've seen a comment saying something along the lines of, when I decide to use it, dot, dot, dot. When asked, it's always the same reason people choose to not use their setups. No matter how effective or expensive they were, it always comes back to one thing, and that's convenience. I think we've all been there at one point or another. Whether it would take more time getting the dust collection set up, powered on, proper blast gates opened and closed, than the actual cut itself would take. Those are normally the same nights when we finish work in the shop and it feels like no matter how much water you drink, your throat is still dry. We've all been there. And as much as I love dust collection, I've even found myself using the same logic at times. Too often in today's world, automation gets a bad rap with being labeled as lazy. And I disagree with that. Although it can definitely be abused and turned into that, using automation the right way frees you up to do more things in life that actually matter. I've seen quite a few videos on dust collection automation and I've even made my own versions based off of a few. So this solution is a combination of quite a few different ideas other makers have had, such as Bob Claggett's video around detecting voltage using an Arduino and Jeremy Fielding's video around using pneumatic cylinders to open and close the blast gates. I've also tweaked a few of their ideas, improved in some spots and added a ton of my own ideas as well. There are some other solutions I've seen and even some that I've used that just wasn't streamlined enough for me. There were wireless remotes to turn on and off your desk collection from a distance, which I had used, but you still have to open and close all the blast gates. I've seen solutions that turn on the desk collection when you open a blast gate, but again, that's still something you have to physically do. And with some of my tools running through multiple gates, since my shop is mobile, that's still more than I wanted to do each time I wanted to use it. I want to start out by saying a lot of this was over my head when I started researching it. And at first glance, it may seem overwhelming at first. However, by the end of the video, my hope is to put your mind at ease and help you make sense of it all. I will start off by showing you an overview of how I'm expecting it to work, and then we'll go over each item I used piece by piece, as they aren't always the most super common thing in a woodworking shop and might be new to some people. I will preface this by saying I'm no expert at any of this. I'm not an engineer or an electrician or a programmer, and it's all completely self-taught through Google and YouTube. So if I misspeak while trying to explain the setup, I apologize in advance and will leave corrections in the pinned comment below. So the goal of this project will be to completely automate the dust collection setup as much as possible and allow for future expansion and upgrades in the automation process. To explain each piece more in depth, I will explain it backwards to hopefully simplify it as much as possible. Again, holistically, it's a pretty complex system if you aren't familiar with these pieces. However, for the most part, each piece on its own in the system is actually pretty simple. Each step has a problem that we need to solve, and I'll walk you through the solution I went with and why in depth. I will also include links to the items I used, so in case you want to buy them yourself, you can, as well as any of the links to download any 3D printed parts I designed and the code for the Arduino for free in the description below. So the first problem to solve is how are we going to automate opening and closing the blast gates? For this, I chose to use pneumatic cylinders. A pneumatic cylinder sounds very technical, but it isn't. In fact, it may be the most simplistic piece of this whole system. It is simply a tube with a piston inside of it. At the end of the piston is a threaded rod. There are two air ports on the side of the unit, one at each end. When we apply pressurized air to the far side, it forces the piston out. When we apply air to the other side, it forces the piston back in. This style of pneumatic cylinder is called a double acting cylinder for this reason. There are also single acting cylinders that use a spring to return the piston to its resting location. However, I wanted the extra force of the air to ensure it forced any excess dust out of the blast gate. However, if this wasn't a concern for you, you could save some money by going this route. I designed 3D printed holders that mount to the edge of the blast gate and hold these in place. On the end of the threaded rod is another 3D printed part that attaches to the folded part of the gate with two screws. These will keep the cylinders secured and aligned so the gate doesn't bind over time. The cylinders then connect to six millimeter tubing that goes back to the main unit. All right, so next we need to solve for deciding which port the air is flowing to. For this, we're gonna use a solenoid valve. This device takes power and has five ports on it. It has one input, two outputs, and two exhausts. In its normal state, it will allow air to go through one side. When we apply power to the device, it switches the air to the other side. 
the exhausts are there because as the sides change, the already pressurized air in the cylinder needs to go somewhere. You can also manually trigger the device by pushing this button. So the next problem is how do we turn the solenoid on and off? For this, we're gonna use relays. A relay is also extremely simple. In its most simplistic form, it's just a switch. Think of it like a light switch in your house. The only difference is that instead of you manually turning it on and off, it will be controlled digitally. Because I had quite a few items to control and plan on expanding down the road for other ideas, I went with a 16 channel relay, which is currently going for around 16 bucks. With this, you will run your hot wire into it, in my case, the red wire. You can see I loop mine in each separate relay on this board, which isn't the only way to do it, just the one I found the easiest. Then you'll run a separate wire, which is the white one this time, to each of your solenoid valves. While we're talking about relays, we're also gonna use one to power on and off the dust collector. However, since the dust collector will require a lot more power than just the solenoid valve, we'll need a more heavy duty relay. For this, we'll use what's called a solid state relay, and it can handle a lot more power without frying itself. Next, how do the relays know when to activate? For this, we're gonna use an Arduino. This is the brain of the entire setup, and Arduino is considered a microcontroller. Think of it as an extremely watered down computer. When booted up, you can program it to run a line of commands when it first starts, and then from there, it's just gonna loop over and over again waiting for something to happen. There are a ton of different variations of Arduinos out there. I chose to use the Arduino Mega as I wanted the additional pins for expandability and future projects. But the Arduino Uno would also work for a project like this if you wanted to save a couple bucks. I also chose to get these breakout boards that allow me to attach the wires by tightening a small screw. This will allow me to avoid soldering to the board, and if I want to expand or make changes later on, I can do so much easier. The coding side of this is the most complex part of the setup. However, for most, if you want to replicate this, you can just tweak my coding to work for you, and you should be good to go. You will need to download their programming environment to a computer, edit anything you want in there, and then connect the Arduino using the USB to send the code to it. All right, at that point, once it's synced up, synced, synced up, sync? Sunk? The hell's the past tense of sync? Once you've downloaded the code to the Arduino, it will restart and then you should be good to go. Next, we need to figure out how to detect when a tool is turned on. And for that, we'll use current sensors. These are also very simple. They have five pins. On one side, you have two to split the black wire, just like a relay. And then the other three will be used to send the reading back to the Arduino. Because we are splitting a live wire, we will do so inside the electrical box and wire a plug to an outlet. We will then plug this device into the wall and then the tool we want to monitor into this device. Next, how do we power everything up? For this, I use a 12 volt power supply. The nice thing about all the parts that I chose to use is they're all powered off of 12 volt. This power supply will have a cord wired into it, which will then plug into a normal wall outlet. All the devices then will be hardwired into this power supply. Now that I've explained each piece, let's put this all together and see if we can get it to work the way we want. Now that it's all hooked up, let's walk through an example of how it works from start to finish. First, we turn on the tool. The current sensor then detects a change and sends that back to the Arduino. The Arduino receives a signal and based on the sensor that it was, it knows in this case that it was the router table. It then sends signals to the proper relays to turn them on or off. 
The relays then switch over and provide power to both the proper solenoid valves and to the dust collector. The solenoid valves then redirect the air into the pneumatic cylinder, forcing the blast gates to open or close accordingly. Then, when we are done, the process looks like this. From there, we turn off the tool. The current sensor detects a change and sends it back to the Arduino. After three seconds, it then powers down the dust collector. After waiting 10 seconds to allow the dust collector to fully stop spinning, the relays then switch back and then cut power to the solenoid valve. The solenoid valve then redirects the air to the other side of the pneumatic cylinder, forcing the blast gates to close. This delay is there to prevent damage to the motor, and if you're using thinner piping for your system, could cause it to collapse on itself. The miter saw is the one tool that needs to be monitored a little bit differently than the rest. Let me explain why. Almost every other tool in the shop doesn't power down between each use. For example, if you're executing the same step on 20 pieces of wood on a table saw, router table, drill press, bandsaw, planer, joiner, you would power on the tool, complete each task 20 times, and then turn off the tool. On a miter saw, when you release the trigger between each cut, it powers down the saw each time. We don't want the system turning on and off every time between cuts, so we need to monitor it a little bit differently. So for the miter saw, once the trigger is released, it starts a 15 second timer versus starting the three second spin down like most tools would. If we start another cut within that time, it clears the timer and starts it again once the saw powers down. If we don't start another cut within 15 seconds, instead of shutting down as normal, it opens up the blast gate back behind where my downdraft is behind the miter saw and then closes the main miter saw gate. It leaves this open for five seconds to clear any remaining dust that may have gotten behind the saw and then goes through the normal process. This is the kind of thing you wouldn't be able to do with a store-bought, even the most expensive automation systems. They just don't allow for that amount of customization. So what about the tools we don't have monitored to turn on and off? Because I plug multiple different things into the overhead power reel, I don't want it monitored and kick on the dust collection in case I'm charging a battery or plugging in my grinder. So for these, we will use buttons to activate the benchtop dust collection. And I'll do the same thing with the floor sweep. In trying to find a convenient location for them, I discovered that on my router table, there are four holes on the side designed for mounting into the main table saw rail. Because I didn't use these as intended, as they stick out past those rails, I discovered these buttons fit in there perfectly and also look really nice. They're in a nice centralized location in the shop, allowing for easy access. There's a few complications this setup provides with a shop that's intended to be mobile. No joke, figuring out these solutions probably took about 80% of the time on this project as I'd never seen these solves before or even problems people attempted to solve. So it took me quite a few attempts to fail and then eventually get it right. Let me walk you through those and my fixes for them. First was the data wires getting to the mobile tools. I didn't want to be disconnecting a bunch of data wires each time I wanted to move the saw. Previously, I used Molex connectors and it worked okay. However, trying to crimp those wires that were so thin was a nightmare and eventually I had a few break on me. I found these serial connections that allowed me to run all these wires to the disconnect point, screw it in instead of crimping or soldering them, and it gave me a nice clean connection. So when the time comes that I have to bring the car in and move the saw around, this makes much quicker work for the data wires. Next was multiple airlines, kind of a similar problem. Because I have my table saw and router table together, which will go to a blast gate for the main base of each tool, to do this, I'll need three blast gates. So that is six airlines already. I also have other future plans that will require two to six more airlines. So I could have up to 12 lines running here. I didn't want to unplug and keep track of 12 different airlines each time I move the saw. I tried a type of manifold that I designed and 3D printed. It would attach and line them all up. It used O-rings to try and keep them from leaking. And no matter what I did, they still leaked air. So that was a big waste of time. So eventually I came across this beauty that cost me about 25 bucks. This lines them up perfectly each time. It looks very clean and is airtight. I designed and printed a base for the one side to mount to so it wasn't dragging around on the ground. And it turned out really nice. Now I can reconnect or disconnect these in about 10 seconds, which would have been a nightmare without it. Next, when the table saw and router table aren't hooked up to the main system, it messes up the current sensor reading and it kicks the system on at all times. To eliminate this issue, I printed a magnet port, which also solves connecting the dust hose quickly itself, that has a small micro switch in it. When the hose is hooked up, the system monitors these two tools. When the hose is not hooked up, it ignores them. Simple. Finally, we need to put the finishing touches on this and we can call it done.
project this cool needs to have its own name. Introducing the Home Automated Dust Extraction System, aka Hades. One of my favorite video games of all time is Horizon Zero Dawn. Please don't sue me. I think this cleans it up nicely, and in the middle has a hidden exhaust fan to allow the heat from the power supply and solenoids to escape, and the air can get in from below where the wires enter, and really doesn't allow dust in that way either. I love where this project is headed, and opens up a ton of possibilities for my shop in the future that I'm sure will make it into future videos. I have a lot of ideas where this could go. A couple ideas include maybe using a separate shop vac for things like overarm table saw dust collection or even the router table fence that would use a pipe as its collection bin with a blast gate at the bottom. Then when you are done using the tool, it would empty that dust into the main line opening the blast gate. Two vacuums, only one bin to empty. Pretty cool. I've also thought about modifying a robot vac that I could tell to run and upon returning to the dock, it could empty out into the main dust collection bin and this may or may not already be in the works. Is any of this necessary? God, no. It's extreme overkill and I get that. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. But regardless of that, what I love about these kinds of projects is learning something new, opening new doors with technology I hadn't really used much before, and what else could be done with it? It's also awesome to have a unique custom solution that solves a problem that everyone has. Knowing that someone will see this video, it will get their brain going, and they'll invent an even better solution. Similar to what I saw Bob's video, I like to make stuff. I likely don't even attempt going down this rabbit hole if I hadn't seen his video to begin with. So I know someone will take this and make one that blows it away someday. Maybe one that's even more accessible and easier to use to more people. I know someday someone will look at the flip-top workbench that I made, or the drill press or miter saw dust collection videos, and take those concepts and make them even better. And that's what I love about this community, coming together to solve problems that make us all better at what we do. So that's gonna wrap this one up today. If you like what you saw or learned something new, be sure to like the video. If you're new here, would like to see more content like this, check out other videos on the channel and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when new videos are released. And as always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.